Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code FRAMERATE7. And by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to ProXPN.com slash twit and use the code FR20. Keep going. Keep letting it go. Soak it in. Is that big (laughs) slow-mo? All right, I'm going. Ladies and gentlemen, it's frame rate. Welcome to Frame Rate, episode 132, the show that thinks you should be able to watch the stuff you love when you want, where you want, on whatever damn device you choose, and aims to give you the tools to do it. I'm Tom Merritt. Hey, I'm Brian Brushwood, and that was, uh, that. They, they did not lie, that was the best, worst movie death scene I've, I've ever seen. We we weren't even able to finish it, man. We had to cry, you know, cry uncle. We had to, you talk about the two types of things on, on, on YouTube. There's the highly polished, highly produced things. We'll talk about those later in the show. There's the, you know, on your phone, cat video things. But there's a third category, and that falls in that category right there, which is clips from crazy stuff. It's just that magic. It's somebody, it's that found gold, and it's a transformative yeah. moment. Like, whatever, that was probably like an actual moment that meant something when the movie came out. But now, standing alone, it just is something utterly different. I love the transformative remix culture that we live in, man. No, oh, me too. Absolutely. Hey, uh, thanks uh, to all the, the folks who filled in uh, last week and, and a few weeks back. Uh, I'm, I'm back now for the foreseeable future, Brian. I hope you Even don't though have it doesn't sound like you. A ish. bunch of people were saying, looks like Tom oh. Merritt. Do you like the sound like Tom Merritt? I picked this up in the islands. (laughs) It's fresh. It does. It sounds. It sounds fresh. You you sound well rested, Tom. You think it's time to just uh, dive right into the big story? Let's do. This just in: the big story. Well, well, well. All the suitors come a knocking to Hulu, and guess what they say? None of you get the rose. We're keeping it. <laughs> We're Never keeping mind, Maxies. See, yep. you know what? This makes me think that that like the whole news cycle was designed to punk me trying to fill your shoes while you were out of town. Because that's all we talked about was who's going to buy Hulu, the bell of the ball, and then just Baxies. And then, and then on top of that, they're going to invest almost a billion dollars on top of it. Yeah. No, $750 million will be invested in Hulu. Now, That's just a one-time fund, according to All Things D. And you compare that to the billion dollars a year Amazon is spending on programming and the $2 billion a year Netflix is spending on programming. It don't look like that much. Uh, But essentially what what Hulu said was, we we got some pretty nice offers, but none of them were compelling. And we're aligned now. Where did Bob Iger from Disney uh, and 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 Chase uh, from from Fox are said we we know where we're going with this and we decided we saw the value we're going to keep it. Okay, so and and they did elaborate. They did say that they were going to focus on their premium content, what you're going to get for eight dollars a month. And previously, we had reported how one camp really wanted everything to be free, paid with ads. The other camp wanted it to be you know eight dollars a month. But so it sounds like. For sure, we're still going to have the, the worst of both worlds and that we're going to have ads and be paying $8 a month for Hulu Plus. 
Well, uh, if any, yeah, if anything, it sounds like they might go to just subscription and not have the free stuff anymore eventually. But for now, they're going to have both. You're right. I, I kind of wouldn't mind that. If they would have a clarity of vision and be able to say in one sentence what you can expect to use Hulu for and what you would get out of it, that would be better. But like Hulu is such an amorphous cloud of suck right now. I just don't even know. It's it's I, I don't know why anyone is using it or why I should go to it at this point. Yeah, Chase Carey said, we believe the best path forward for Hulu is a meaningful recapitalization. Isn't that enough for you? Doesn't that tell you everything? <laughs> That's the other thing. And you know, you know, I'm lousy about translating business speak to begin with. But like, I thought this was, there's some extraordinarily good uh, uh, BS talk. I can't even make heads or tails for it. Yeah, no, the, the, the Chase Carey said things like, you know, we had meaningful conversations with, with the buyers. Uh, you know, we really liked our dates with them. They were nice people, but we decided to stick with what we got uh, right now. Bob Iger was out there talking as well, uh, saying pretty much similar things in fewer words. But Time Warner, apparently, according to Bloomberg, is still in the mix. Time Warner wanted to go in on a bid and get a stake in Hulu. And apparently they're still talking to Disney and Fox at this point, saying, hey, can we still buy a stake? We'd like to join the party. Uh, well, that's good, because if there's one thing Hulu definitely needs, it's another cook in that kitchen. I mean, that's that's the weird part, too, is there's no clear whatever. But uh, I do think this is a smart play for Time Warner. I think what Time Warner is doing is positioning itself to remain relevant as the uh, the validator, the gatekeeper to get you into all the, the the content systems. Just prove you're a Time Warner cable subscriber, and then you get into the magical wonderland where you really can watch a certain amount of the programming you want at times when when you want it. Uh, and I think this would be a good play for them to have a piece of Hulu uh, if you know if it's the kind of thing where they didn't want to own it outright and they weren't going to get the because the whole reason this broke down, as you predicted, was that you needed all anybody really wanted was guarantees for the content. And it sounds like Hulu was not able to guarantee that to anyone. And that's the yeah. big reason everything broke down. And, and, and therefore, nobody would give the amount of money to Hulu that Hulu wanted. Hulu's seeing the valuation on Netflix, which is what? Is something like $12 billion. Uh, and, and everybody's like, yeah, we'll give you $1 billion for Hulu. Right. Uh, right. So I, here, here's the quote I was looking for earlier from Bob Iger. Throughout the process, we continued to give consideration to strategic value of Hulu and to investment value longer term. In other words, we constantly had second thoughts about how much this stuff was worth. Then the interest of News Corp and Disney galvanized during the process about that. And we concluded that even though we had some compelling offers on the table, the future of Hulu is bright and we should hang on to it. In other words, Disney and News Corp looked at each other and said, that's all we can get for it? Well, we might, we might as well just keep it and, and try to like remodel, you know, put, put in some new countertops or something and, and make this thing look prettier and maybe sell it again a couple of years down the road. Where do you think Hulu goes from here? Is this, is this the lightning rod oh, that galvanizes that everything and gives them a direction? <laughs> or, or is it, do we just, because first I'll tell you mine, I think that we just continue to see more of this crazy schizophrenic talk. Hulu is the relationships of these companies made manifest in physical form. So it will be just as crazy as the nature of the entire business only and, and uh, only just very loudly and in public. And people like you and me are just going to get more and more annoyed. While meanwhile, Netflix and I suspect HBO, uh, I suspect HBO will continue to build its brand. Uh, somebody was saying something. Uh, never mind. Forget about the HBO thing. We'll come back to that later. Uh, I, I think that everyone is finding their voice except for Hulu and it's not getting any better. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I feel like this is a loss for the consumers. It may be the right thing for Disney and, and Fox, but it's a loss for the consumers that Hulu is not going to be put in someone's hands who cares about actually making a really good online video service. Because what the networks want is a way to stop you from using other things. They, want, they right. want to stop you from piracy. They want to stop you from YouTube. That's what it was created for. They want to stop you uh, from, from going to other things. They want you to, to stay with them and help them make the transition. If Time Warner Cable were to get in on this, I think that could push Hulu down a good road, which is Hulu could become a TV everywhere app uh, where you authenticate with Hulu. 
based on your cable subscription, and then you get access to a world of online video content. That's not a bad way to go. That's kind of what DirecTV wanted to do. It's kind of what Dish wanted to do. Uh, I don't think if, if, if they keep it just News Corp, sorry, not News Corp, but 21st Century Fox now, uh, and Disney with Comcast, the silent partner that can't talk, I, I think they continue to just eat themselves. They, they don't, they're at cross purposes. They created Hulu out of vengeance, and it's gotten too successful, and now they fear their own creation. Uh, and, and so I think they continue to put the reins on it, and it won't grow into something that the consumers love because they're not doing it for the people using it. They're doing it for themselves. Right. Correct. Uh, and actually, uh, breaking news, I actually have Hulu on the line with a statement. Let's hear it. <laughs> so apparently Hulu agrees with you, Tom. It's kind of, yeah, actually that's metaphorical, isn't it? The first shot was when they tried to sell it the first time. The second shot's the second time. Maybe a third shot. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry, I'm just going to keep playing it. <laughs> All right, let's, let's move along to another big story then. Stop everything. It's another big story. No, I mean, seriously, stop everything because it turns out you get your news from television. Before what? anywhere else, that's, according that's to a Gallup talk. poll, 55% of those surveyed by the polling firm mentioned TV news as their top source of news. Uh, second was the internet. Uh, third was print, then poor radio down there at the bottom. Uh, a sad, that's kind of sad for me. I, I don't fall into it this particular way, but apparently when, when people want to know what's going on, they still turn on the TV. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, I would probably have to, I would probably fall into that, cat, fall into the category, but not on purpose, by which I mean, you know, I cut the cord, so I don't have any 24-hour cable news stations. I don't ever, when something's happening, get up and go to the living room and turn on the television to find out what's going on. However, institutionally, every time I go to the gym, that's what's on, and you can't help but see the ticker happening. And so, like, like half, the, half the stuff, you know, I... I don't get caught up in, in a lot of sensational cases. So it's like, you know, the, the Zimmerman trial, I, I guess, had a verdict, but I, I, didn't, I only know it because I of Google News. I knew it from Twitter. Yeah, well, yes, exactly, for Twitter and Google News. But I also would have seen it uh, on, you know, on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, while I'm over at the treadmill or whatever. Like, so it's like, I, I don't know if that, uh, okay. I don't know if I believe it. Like, if I was reporting, I would have to say, I hear a lot of this crap because of cable television news. But I don't even have cable, and I don't watch. Certainly, don't watch twenty four hour cable TV news. I, I think it's I think it's probably true. I think it's probably true. Even even for the eighteen to twenty nine year olds who said fifty percent television versus twenty seven percent internet, that people when they think of news, right? They don't think of, like, they're going online and they're reading Twitter and they're reading Facebook. They're not thinking of that as news. They're thinking, oh, news. Yes, you mean the guy sitting behind the desk reading the news to me. Yes, I get that on television. What I think is interesting is I still turn to video, streaming video, be it cable television over the air or online for breaking news for, for events happening now. It does seem to be the best venue for that. But I'm continually experimenting with the BBC app on Roku or the Sky News app that is now on Apple TV because I'd rather get it from there than any of the current offerings in the United States. Yeah. No, I could totally see all of that. Uh, to me, the most interesting part of this article was talking about uh, the age disparity between people who get more of their information from the Internet versus uh, not television, but print media. What was it? Yeah. Over age 65, you're looking at uh, uh, how much? Yeah, like 20 percent. That's amazing. Um, yeah. That uh, I mean, that, like day old news is when they find out. I mean, I guess if you did it your whole life, you get used to that. Uh, I, you know, we're going to continue to see this shift. This isn't uh, by any stretch the end of the discussion. I think we're uh, I think we are surprised that I guess I don't know. Why do we keep getting fooled on this, Tom? Because like we should know as big as this bubble is that we're in. We're, we're sitting in our little tiny cord cutting uh, magical Internet bubble and we look around and we're like, Man, this place just keeps getting bigger. Look at all this room. We got to be taking over the world. And then we find out that all we've moved is from 2% of the real world yeah, to 3% yeah. of the real world. I, I think that's just typical of early tech adoption. And, uh, and it, it reminds me of the web in the early 90s. The first time I saw a URL up on a billboard, it was the University Federal Credit Union in Austin, by the way. Oh, I was UFCU, stunned. sure. 
UFCU.org. I was like, Right next what? to AOL keyword, UFCU. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Those were the days when you'd see AOL keyword before you'd ever see a URL. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I was like, God, I do everything on the web. Why doesn't anybody... It's it's early adopters and it and and those early days of the bubble. It takes a while before it starts to gain critical mass and really accelerate, and then everybody starts to use it. Facebook and Twitter are like that now. Everybody knows Facebook and Twitter. They're on every advertisement. Uh, it wasn't like that five years ago. So maybe in five years, we'll, yeah, we'll, maybe we'll be out of the bubble. Can't get here fast enough. Let's uh, thank our sponsor, our first sponsor for today's show. This episode of Frame Rate brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Uh, Brian, do you yeah. want? perfect image or video for your next creative project? Let me tell you, man, not so good with the video, not so good with the images. If there was a way for me to pull a fast one and look like I was a pro, pro photographer or went out and did like really good work and I could like take credit for it, maybe even full on, you know, hint that, that this is all my footage. I really went to Singapore to get this skyline. That'd be great, but it's not possible. Yeah. There's no way you for me to do that. You green screen yourself drinking a tiger beer in front of the yeah. Singapore skyline. And I'm here. I'm here right now. No, you, you can do that. You can totally do that with Shutterstock. They have wait, a wait, million well, hold on, high hold on. quality exactly. stock video clips. No, no, look, I I know you could go to like Google Images and steal pictures, Tom. No, no, I'm no, not, no, no. I'm not done. But you can't use stuff. that. You can't yeah. use it in any commercial you can, products. Can you, yes, you can. That's why because Shutterstock, you you pay for the rights and then you get what? them. You don't have to keep paying either. You get them. You use it in your in your thing. Uh, and two D, three D animation, motion graphics. All kinds of stuff. They're they're adding ten thousand video clips each week. So every time you visit, you're going to find something new, and it's from pros. This is good stuff. They actually vet every video. They look at every video and say, "Is this good stuff? Okay, this is good stuff. We're going to put it in there." Sophisticated right on, search tools, man. And it's how not many, crazy. how many? That, that, this is where they screw you, right? It's got to be like a super tiny selection. Probably don't have no. a lot to choose from. Flexible pricing, whatever you need. You can choose between individual clips, video packs, download clips in HD, or you can buy standard definition for the web. Uh, but here's, here's the deal. So you can sign up for free. How's that? What? Sound? Just start what? an account. Yeah. Just start an account. Begin using Shutterstock. You find that, that Singapore skyline clip. You put it behind, you put it in your clip box. And then if you decide to purchase it, you're like, no, I really need to make this video. Use the offer code framerate 7 and new accounts will receive 30% off any package. Wow. That just seems like if I, if I, that's amazing. Like if I bought $3 billion worth of photos, then I'd save almost a billion dollars. That's right. That's shutterstock.com. And for 30% off new accounts, use offer code frame rate seven. I could thank almost, Shutterstock for their support. I could almost buy Hulu with that billion dollars today. <laughs> Yes, today is the day they're supporting frame rate. Good point, hey, we, Tom. We've got a uh, new segment coming up after yeah. the normal segments. So we'll explain don't, why, don't too. Touch that mouse. Let's start off with the slipstream. Uh, AT&T and DirecTV are leading the charge to get rid of sports. Well, not get rid of sports, but make sports optional in your cable package. They're both decided not to carry CSN Houston, Comcast Sports Network Houston. Now, that's not just a fly-by-night network. They carry the Houston Rockets basketball games and the Houston Astros baseball games, and they say, nope, too expensive, not enough people watch it. Yeah, I mean, basically, we're looking at uh, the the new iteration of, you know, block sales that we saw back in the the early 20th century that, uh, you know, we've I've talked about this on the master switch uh, where essentially, you know, it's one side, you have to take all of our crappy networks all at once, whether you like it or not. And basically they're just saying, no, not going to do it. It's and not what's interesting to it's the make providers saying, sure, people watch the NFL. We get that, but they don't watch much of anything else. Uh, yeah. Not in great enough numbers. And so the, the facade is starting to crack a little. What did they say? There was one number that really astonished me, like uh, as little as, um, I'll see if I can find this number, but I know the numbers are, are astonishingly 4% of households bad. tune in to watch sports outside of the NFL. That's 4% of households tune into sports besides the NFL. That is amazing, considering that everyone has to pay and that the average, I think we did a story a while ago saying that the average cable customer spends $80 a year of their cable bills to subsidize other people's sports. And for someone like me who doesn't give... Uh, a rat's behind about sports. That's a sobering number. I'm sober now because I said that number, Tom. I was time. drunk. Yeah. 
And that just, that was like a splash of cold coffee in your face and gullet at the same time. It was a straight up football to the groin. That's what it was, yeah. Tom. Uh, all, all kinds of, of people are writing about this new production facility uh, in Los Angeles called YouTube Space LA, offering a place for YouTube creators to use high-end equipment to get technical advice from experts. That's where my wife works. Uh, yeah, I, man. It was it was pretty cool. I didn't get the chance to watch the whole uh, walkthrough with Sumi Das, but uh, was it pretty much the tour that, that you and I got in person? Yes, pretty much. Uh, it, it, it is, although some of the things have, have changed. Uh, essentially, what YouTube has done and... Full disclosure, my wife works there, so I hope I don't sound too glowing, but they've created this huge space with big studios and green screens and production equipment. And if you have 10,000 subscribers to your channel, you can apply to go in and take a lab course and learn how to use all this equipment. And they got ink to me cameras. They got, they got amazing equipment in there. They really do. Uh, it, it does require you to build up your audience first. It's not for everyone, but it's kind of like access cable on steroids. Yeah, well, and that's exactly what I thought of. It, it reminds me of Access uh, Cable, uh, but but with a definite, definite eye for quality. And the fact that there's a vetting process where it's like you have to put out consistent content. You can't be any, any Yahoo. But, but really, uh, you know, what they're doing is amazing to me because they aren't picking winners and losers. What they're doing is they're, is they're building an entire industry. They are, they are fleshing out and legitimizing an entire class of, of media. Uh, which yeah. I, and and I think by and large they're doing smart things. Like one of the things that the article mentions is that they they physically make a lot of workspace because they want people to have these synergistic moments. So they're like, oh my gosh, it's you from that show. Oh, I love you in that show. We should do a thing here. Hop on this. I'm we're doing this in a, in a minute. I mean, essentially they're creating a little bit. I mean, there's a reason that LA continues to be where so much of the media is is made, and it's because you got all the bodies there and all the talent. That they can right. easily bump into each other and run over and do this thing or that by creating an actual studio that in many ways is exactly the cartoon image that you would have of what a Warner Brothers cartoon studio where all the cartoons work together. Like in many ways, that's exactly what this space is like. It's magical and people really are coming all around working on all their projects simultaneously uh, I, I think I think what they're doing is a, is a smart and interesting play. It's an expensive one, though, man. So it's yeah, like, it I don't is. know. And because they're doing it they're in gonna... London, they're doing it in Tokyo. I mean, they're they're opening up other spaces. It's 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 a big bet. It's a Google size bet to throw this much money at it and say, well, we hope this improves the quality enough that we improve the viewership enough that it pays off for selling ads. That's that's essentially what they want to do. They want to sell ads. Yeah. Uh, Aereo would like to sell subscriptions, but everybody wants to stop them. And now Hearst has got into the act. As we mentioned on, on previous shows, Aereo has opened up in Boston, and now WCVB, a Hearst-owned Boston television station, has decided to sue Aereo. Now, explain to me the rationale between this. This I, It looks to me like they're attempting to take down you know a giant with a death by a thousand cuts here because it's like but Ario just keeps winning like all of these all of these little lawsuits uh Ario keeps getting validated no it's a cloud DVR service no you're not retransmitting anything they're buying you're renting a specific antenna well, and got a know, good case Brian every judge is so objective that they always rule the same so <laughs> well, you take okay. it to and a different court will never get you a different result that and I, I guess that's the thinking behind it, which kind of bums me out. For if that's sure. the whole reason, but but doesn't each little victory bolster the case for Aereo and put them in a stronger position? It also to where it costs them. I mean, here's the thing: you've got CBS, you've got Fox, you now you have Hearst all throwing in. This is one station in Boston, but it's a big company that owns it. They've got big pocketbooks. They can all split up the cost of the assault, while Aereo has to bear it all themselves because they're the ones being targeted. Yeah, but I guess also like kind of the whole launch when we mentioned Ariel from the beginning, you know, it's it's Barry Diller money, man, and it's something that from the get go he knew he was going to be fighting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to assume that he's got a sizable war chest uh, dedicated to this. I mean, man, I don't know. It's weird. It's uh, uh, I don't know what they're expecting to have come of it, but um, well, I, man, I, I, it doesn't seem weird to me. It's unfortunate, uh, and I'm sure you're right that Barry Diller. I mean, he doesn't have an inexhaustible supply of money, but I'm sure he he figured out about how much he thought this would all cost and, and set aside for it. Smart guy, right? Uh, but yeah, this is the tactic I would take as an industry. If anything, you might say collusion, although I'm not sure it's illegal to collude to 
file lawsuits against something you think is pretty plainly illegal. Uh, but yeah. Aereo has won some preliminary stuff. Don't let's not overcharacterize how much they've won. They haven't won an actual court case yet. It's all been preliminary motions and injunctions that they've been able to fight off. Correct. Correct. That's a good point. Now, at some point, and again, like I'm dumb of law, at some point, can't Aereo, or it would seem to me like Aereo would be able to make some kind of like, all right, can't we just combine all these into just one case? Like, can is that a thing that happens in law? Or am yeah, I just making you can do that. I'm, you can do that. That's I, I. You're getting out of my depth of the law for sure, okay. too. But I've, I've heard. We need they, to get back. I don't to, know when it's a class action and when it's not, and all all that sort of stuff. But and they're also filing in different districts, so that's I learned that's the other thing. I learned all of my law from playing Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. So that's probably that's, that's probably not the best. I should probably move no, I move you, on I think to pass the bar with that. Let's move yeah, on. Let's, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple quick ones here. A firmware update for the Slingbox 500 uh, will now let you check out video and images in most formats from a FAT32 or NTFC drive under three terabytes in size. You just plug it in and you can stream them right over the Slingbox. Uh, now, little, little USB port on the back. Do you need to, I guess it needs to be connected physical media. The Slingbox can't do stuff like reach out to your home network and access those files over the network. No, it, has you, to be, it, is, yeah. it has always been able to sync media from your iOS and Android devices. Uh, okay. But it has been able to play other media unless it was parked beside your TV. Uh, so basically we're looking at just a USB stick solution, an easy way for you to just pl plug something off a thumb drive. Yeah, it's basically plug it like, in hey, I've got these MOVs and they're right. not on my phone. So I want to watch them on, I can, I have a sling box. There's lots of other solutions for this, but if you already have a sling box, you do this firmware update, then you can plug it in and play them. It's, oh, it's a, I guess it's a I, missed that. I, I missed the fact that it uh, was a firmware thing, just suddenly yeah. giving you that ability. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. They also improved the sling sync transfer speeds, uh, some minor bug fixes and stuff too. So if you are a sling box owner, you, you should go get that. Uh, you might be more excited about this, Mr. Cord Cutter, a channel yeah. master and Echo Star working on a new over-the-air DVR, which I know is, a, is an issue for a lot of people. You can get a TiVo out there. Boxy is kind of resigned they're, they're not making the, the DVR, over-the-air DVR box anymore. Uh, but the Channel Master K77 is in the works. An over-the-top functionality will come in two flavors with a 16-gigabyte built-in flash drive, which relies on USB storage, uh, or a built-in 320, or wait, three, yeah, 320 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah, man. Well, now that I'm saving money by not having cable, now it's time for me to start spending some of the savings by getting uh, over-the-air antennas and figuring out what DVR solution is. So certainly if anyone has an experience they want to share with us at uh, fr at twit.tv, I'd be all ears. Uh, the uh, I, I did notice that, uh, and we'll, I'll mention this uh, when with our feedback segment later, uh, I got curious about what channels I was able to receive here locally in my area. And I went to titantv.com. And it looks like uh, it looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like twelve different stations. One, two, oh, you just seven. need an antenna, then? Is that what you're? You, you haven't hooked up? An yeah. Antenna. Well, well yeah. but also a, a DVR, so that you know, because again, like my kids don't understand the idea of appointment programming. The idea that like, well, why can't I watch this right now? They're like, well, it's not on right now. And they're like, what does that mean? And then they throw something at me, and they're like, go back to the 1980s, Dad. You need to go to antennaweb.org. Oh, uh, okay. And go there. Web. Do, do I need to like mount mount something outside or are they antenna web inside? We'll, we'll make those recommendations for you. you. Put in your zip code, put in your address if you want, and they will tell you similar stuff as like what you saw. Of like you you should get these channels. This is the direction you should point your antenna. These channels you'll need a, a to mount an outside antenna to get these channels. You can get pretty reliably with an inside antenna. It's run oh, by wow. this Consumer Electronics Association. It's exactly for what you're doing. That is awesome. I am totally looking at it right now. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, absolutely. I'll, it looks like I got, uh, uh, I, it's got red, blue, and violet. I don't know what, what any of these mean. I don't remember off the top of my head what they, what that means, but yeah, so that All means right. your reception level for some, for, for some of them, I think. Uh, got another it. way, uh, to protect yourself, Brian, is a VPN that will allow oh my you gosh. to be spied upon. And that's our other sponsor for today. Pro XPN, global virtual private network operator, works with almost any internet connection. Secure encrypted tunnel. I was using it on vacation at the airport. I was like, I don't want, I don't know who's on this network at this airport. Darren Kitchen might be here. I don't know. <laughs> Shannon you, you Morris know might done? be snooping packets. I don't want to, so, I don't want to risk that. Uh, you know what I've done is I've actually 
just installed it on all of my systems. And so like by default, as soon as they power on, they go ahead and they encrypt. And I forget that it's even on there, right? There might be like one moment because obviously when you're going through an encrypted channel, there's there's more steps. And so you might not get as fast of service, uh, you know, for certain things, but like for surfing and all that stuff, it was so fast. In fact, I went live the other day, started um, broadcasting Live stream, didn't even realize I was doing an encrypted signal the entire time. That's how fast the Pro XPN is. And if there ever is a time that it's like, I'm like, no, I need my full bandwidth, full stop, then, you know, it's it's super easy. It's one click to turn it on, one click to turn it off. You see the little green light that says Time Warner don't know what my bits are doing. And that's the way yeah. I like it. Exactly. You can and you can uh, you can choose from different geographically located servers to maybe find one that that the fastest for you. They have servers in the UK, in the US, in Asia, other places. They've got one in Canada. I know uh, it protects yourself against packet sniffing. Uh, it works via OpenVPN or PPTP. I, I set it up on my phone. Works on my. I can use it on my phone oh, as well. I totally Portable need to do that. Brilliant. Keep yes, your personal internet personal. Make sure your internet region free. Nobody can see what you're doing. Nobody should see what you're doing. World-class customer support. Steve Gibson, Security Now, gave it a great review. That convinced me. Go to ProXPN.com slash twit for more information and to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts, normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for an entire year, which isn't bad, but we've got a special offer that's even better. Use the code FR20 to receive 20% off for the lifetime of your account. That's less than five bucks a month on the yearly plan. And if you're not satisfied, if for some reason you don't like it, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. So there's no reason not to try it out. Go to proxpn.com slash twit, sign up with the code FR20 and show your support for frame rate. We thank ProXPN for their support of frame rate. VPN, it's the tool of the cord cutter today. Proxpn.com slash twit, FR20. Let's move on to film time. Uh, the Guild is over. No more Guild, apparently. The sixth season is it. Uh, not to spoil anything, but the last episode kind of had a final feel to it and paid content. I uh, got on the horn with Felicia Day, and she said, if I woke up with an amazing idea for a season seven, then booyah, I would have done it. But six years of one show, that's more than most shows ever get. It was such a peaceful decision that I knew it was the right one. So uh, one of the stalwarts, one of the pioneers of web video coming to a close. That's kind of a, yeah. a, mo a mile marker in itself right there. Well, and it, it maybe is a smart thing because she's saying like, man, six years is a long time for a show. I think it's time to, you know, let's wind it up and move on to the next thing. And then I'm thinking like, Man, Scam School is in its sixth year, and I wasn't <laughs> planning to start. Like, should I be stopping Scam School right now? Am I am I stuck in the past? Am I yeah, am yeah. I squeezing blood out of a stone at this well, point? Well, but no, you're, it's the difference between reality television and scripted television, right? You're essentially I don't I don't want to damn you with that kind of praise, but you're you're mm -hmm. not doing a a sitcom. You're not doing a drama. Uh, and those I'm not shows telling do a tend, story with arcs. Yeah, yeah. Those those shows do tend to last longer. She's saying for scripted shows. Six, six seasons is actually pretty long, and she's right. Well, and she also has a ton of other stuff going on. It's not like oh, yeah, she's you know, retiring from yeah. the public eye or anything. No, I mean, she's got a lot of other things going on. So so get, get off her back. She doesn't need to be making you guild episodes all the time. Just let her let her have a nap once in a while. Play the hit. Oh, wait, no, that's not what <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, it's a milestone. I keep saying mile marker when I mean milestone. Apologize for that. Uh, another milestone is a new Star Trek series. Now, I know we've talked about these a lot. In fact, I think we've talked about this one before. Star Trek Continues uh, is, is a new show. They've got their first episode out. They have three vignettes. It stars Grant Imahara from Mythbusters as Sulu. Uh, they got the guy who played Adonis in whom, or played Apollo in Who Mourns for Adonis to reprise his role for this first episode as an older version of himself. Uh, and it's really well done. Now, we've talked about Star Trek Voyages before, which is the same idea, recreating right. Star Trek with original looking sets and props and, and scripts as if they're continuing the five-year mission. Uh, this, is, this is a thing that the web has totally made possible. Yeah, man. And I'll tell you what, it's gorgeous. It looks 100% right. And uh, I wanted to show it off to my wife, but instead my daughter walked in and I was like, hey, Penny, do you know what this is? And she goes, uh, no. 
And then I realized my daughter has never seen the original series. But this looks, it's got the exact same feel. The costuming is fantastic. The fact that they're all rocking 1960s hairstyles. Uh, very, very well done. And I, I also, got sucked in. I ended up watching the first 15 minutes oh, of it. Yeah. Christopher Dewan, James Dewan's son, plays Scotty. So it's yeah. the guy who played Scotty's son playing Scotty. Gotta love that. Yeah. I'm, I, and and again, kudos, kudos for whoever owns the Star Trek franchise for just letting these projects live, you know? CBS. I mean, yeah, that's all. Now, is CBS just universally awesome about other people using their properties? Or is there something magical about the come and go of Star Trek over the years that has, you know, just built up this precedent? Because I just, I, I don't think know. It's something special about Star Trek, but. I, I give CBS props for working with these people and allowing them to do it because they could easily come in and crush all of this stuff. But they, yeah. they've they given permission to New Voyages. They've given permission to Star Trek Continues. Uh, and the, these guys have been doing something called the Farragut Show, which is an entirely original show set in the Star Trek universe with permission. And now they've actually moved on to to recreating the original Star Trek. And I think CBS realizes that this isn't going to undermine anything if anything it's going to help them sell more merch and more dvds and and more online downloads etc cetera, etc cetera. well definitely kudos to them for having the wisdom to see that uh it's it's unfortunately all too rare for somebody to be smart in that way a couple more film film items uh netflix has the spin-off of the movie turbo now turbo comes out in the movie theaters next week and netflix will be running turbo fast a series from dreamworks based on the movie yeah. yeah. So this isn't really, I mean, it's not a Netflix movie. This is a DreamWorks movie. Man, look at that. Look at that stupid poster with the patented DreamWorks smirk. Like, can DreamWorks uh, just make one dang movie without that slanty ass smirk? It must work. Like, every single one. Every single one. Sorry. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, smart move on Netflix. And we talked about this before. Turbo Fast is going to be a very big play. My kids are going to watch the hell out of it. And like they understand that uh, they that their perceived value is based on how much people are using Netflix. My guess is they don't care if people are rewatching the same content over and over and over again. In which case, the fact that they're catering to kids with original content is very very smart because they will. My kids are on like their eighth lap on some of the shows. Yeah, that they're it was, watching it's the on first the first Netflix. original ki kids show that Netflix has ventured into. They're also talking uh, to Brian Grazer about another season of Arrested Development. That kind of surprised me. Yeah, well, and it's like, uh, I, I mean, yeah, yes and no, it's it's just going to boil down to the schedules, right? Like everybody, it, it's amazing that the last one even happened. And uh, certainly, for, I think they got their value out of it just with the publicity. And uh, I think that over time, the uh, And I think they said something about this in the article, that over time that people will warm to what Arrested Development was this last iteration, and they're taking a long view of it. Um, so good. I mean, I guess keep, keep on talking. Yeah, I, I, and remember, Netflix has taken some heat in the investing community over the fact that they won't allow people to know how many times their shows have been watched. But Netflix says, we don't really care how many times they've been watched. What we care about is who's watching them and whether those people keep their subscriptions. And so they must have had enough people watch Arrested Development, whether it was a big number or not, that were key that they targeted with this show to make it worth their while to talk about a second season. Uh, yeah. I thought we were just going to go Arrested Development movie and then that would be the end of the franchise. But apparently not. Apparently we might get more of the Bluths. Uh, I'd be okay with that. I don't know if they can get the whole cast together, though. That was one of the reasons they did the season the way they did, which a lot of people didn't like with those intersecting storylines, is that they right. couldn't get everybody on set that often all at once. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not entirely optimistic that, that it'll actually happen. But if it does, I mean, it'd be great to get another. I would be all on board. I think Netflix I'm not is doing great it. with all the originals. Yeah. So, Let's, uh, uh, hey, man, how, how do you want to yeah. explain what we're about to do? Because the, the, the overarching idea was that Look, when, when we first host started this show. And a host love each other very much. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started this, it was really hard to dig up stories. And we were thrilled once we were like, wow, man, I think we have like five whole stories for tube tops or whatever. Uh, and But now as this bubble expands and we, you know, think that we're conquering the world, whether we are or we aren't, uh, now all of a sudden we're just, we're just maggoty with stories and we don't want to cut them 
because there's lots of good ones. And so we came up with a, a way to plow through a bunch of stuff really quick. You want to set this up for us, Tom? Yeah, that's the idea. So we're not getting rid of the big story or tube tops or film film or, or, or slipstream. Uh, but we're, we're trying to get like, like Brian said, get through some stuff quickly because we are blessed with more stories than we can report every week, which was not right. a problem for many years. So we got to figure out. So we gotta, this is what's oh, going to happen. Uh, for now, we're going to call it Quick Cuts. We're open to suggestions for another name. We're actually open to someone uh, making us an, a little bumper to open it with even. Then you could name it yourself. Uh, yeah. But we're going to do five or six stories with a 60-second time limit, Ryan. We, we yes. both have 60 seconds. We're well, not 60 seconds each. It's a total of 60 seconds within which we will discuss the story. Yes, and try to tell it as best we can. But then, uh, but on the off chance that we get all wrapped up and, and we're like, ah, well, you know, I, I, I have to talk longer, we each get one extension. But uh, yes. I don't even think we're going to use it today. Uh, well, we'll see. Probably not. Maybe. Uh, so, right, so Jason Howell, if you could uh, start the clock. Here we go. I'll take the first one. Intel may launch the internet TV service that uses the on cue name. That's GigaOM reporting the name only. They're like, we have sources that say Intel's TV service would be called on cue. TV now, has come to its senses. And the, okay, first of all, and this is that uh, they've got like a like a shell company that does a bunch of registered trademarks that that they can use later. And they they ran across on cue and specifically that tag tagline of TV has come to its senses. I think is brilliant because it's exactly what we were hoping to get from Intel from the very beginning. We said, these are the guys who, have, who don't have a dog in the fight. Now, unfortunately, from statements we heard from Intel, it sounds like they're they're pulling all the air out of this, right? Yeah, Brian Krasanich has been very down on the TV service. Uh, he's been saying things like, well, we want to be cautious. We're not really experienced at this. So we're going to take our time. We're going to go slow. I, I don't think we ever see an Intel TV service. Yeah, I, I, in fact, I was going to push you for a prediction, and it sounds like we're on the same page. No, uh, even though on cue and TV come to senses is a cool idea, I don't think it's going to happen. That's all the time we got for that one. Look at that. See? Forces us to move on. I love it. Boom. Uh, Amazon Prime Instant Video gets a deal with Miramax. Let's you kill Bill on demand is the headline. Basically, the Miramax catalog, all those badass Quentin Tarantino movies coming to Amazon Prime. Uh, this looks to me like just another story of, again, uh, more pieces on the Monopoly board being gobbled up. Uh, is this? Is there any reason that you would go to Amazon Prime to watch these? If, you know, it's funny. My reaction to this story was to go, "Oh, right. I think Netflix does have a bunch of these movies. I should look them up." Yeah, but but you immediately thought of going to Netflix to watch yes, them, right? Exactly. So, at, at what point does there get to be enough parity with all these services that you actually like? Why would you go to Amazon Prime and not Netflix if you knew it was on both? Eventually, it's going to be the originals. Maybe some big title movies, like when Netflix gets to the Avengers, but eventually it's going to be like, oh, I can watch Orange is the New Black. Oh, I can watch Arrested Development. Oh, I can watch House of Cards. Oh, I can watch whatever it is you're, that Amazon you're gonna, has. You're going to get comfortable with a certain ecosystem. You're going to decide like, oh, I'm in the Netflix house right now. I want to stay here. And then, and then that's when you'll have the discovery of all, the, all that stuff. Uh, and that is all the time we have for that. Beep, beep, beep. Netflix, keeping an eye on the wider library with an extended CBS pact. Uh, after Amazon Prime started streaming under the dome four days after air on CBS, Netflix has now re-upped their deal with CBS and expanded it. They've added titles like LA Complex, 4400, CSI New York, uh, to the current stock of Star Trek and Twin Peaks and all that stuff. So good news that that stuff's staying around and that you're going to get some other things in there as well. Now, CBS, uh, d d were they playing nice with uh, Hulu previously? Or, or was there, I forget which networks were, were the, on the outs with Hulu. Uh, no, CBS has put their back catalog on Hulu. They still haven't put currently airing shows on Hulu. But I mean, yes, you can weird? now get Star Trek on Hulu. Yeah, is that, is that weird that they're taking more current content and splitting it? You know, you would think that they would like to score a deal with just you know either, either that Hulu was the or big Netflix. Thing. When, when CBS bought CNET, and I was in on those welcome to the family meetings. One of the big things they kept emphasizing is we'll put our videos anywhere as long as we can authenticate and monetize. And that is exactly what they're doing. They're saying, hey, Netflix, can you pay us what they're worth? Great. We'll give them to you. Hulu, you can pay right. us what they're worth. Great. We'll give them to you. We're not going to undermine our broadcast numbers by putting them out the next day, though. They, they're they the farthest back on that, firmly believing it doesn't give them any benefit at this point. And you just used your extension, sir. Uh, next story. PlayStation oh, 3 lets you... Yeah, <laughs> that's that it. Will. That's just it. You have That's to watch. how it works. 
Uh, PlayStation 3 has YouTube updates that adds auto pairing with mobile devices. Uh, basically, this looks like it brings some of the functionality, uh, like the, the AirPlay style, uh, sending your content to the screen to the PlayStation 3. Actually, reading this article uh, made me remember, like, oh, yeah, I never bothered to set up Xbox uh, Smart Glass. Uh, so I finally set it up today. Have you used it? No, I haven't used I haven't used Smart Glass or this. Uh, I believe this works the way the the Google Nexus Q worked though, where it sends the the information over, and then the PlayStation goes and re-downloads. It's not actually streaming it over your network. Okay, well, I'll tell you what the the Smart Glass app I thought was uh, really nicely done. I'm excited to have like uh, again, it's one of those things where it's like I can't find the controls of the remote half the time. So I just shout, you know, Xbox pause or whatever. But then like sometimes they can't hear me. So just having another way to just like beep, bop, boop, shut up, kids would be awesome for me. Yeah, I like this. Xbox, stop, pause, <laughs> help. Please, shut up. Get me out of here. I'm a celebrity. All right. <laughs> Following Amazon and Netflix, Rakuten is expanding its Wuaki video service. Uh, now here's the deal. Rakuten is sort of the Amazon of Japan. Wuaki is a Spanish streaming company and they're expanding their video service to the UK. And then they say within 18 to 24 months, they'll be in all the major European places. In the UK, the introductory offer is £2.99. That's about a little less than $5 a month for life. And it's not just streaming. You can also rent or purchase movies and TV shows from Wuaki. So because we are so self-centered here in the United States, and I apologize to all of our international fans, like the only way for me to make any sense of the story you just said is to cast all the characters, re recast them as, you know, the, the United States companies. So essentially, I'm in this Marvel what-if scenario. Like, what if Netflix married Amazon Prime but then sold content for $5 in, and eight quatloos or whatever? It's just like I wish I could make heads or tails of how I should feel about that. Uh, I know what I don't know how I should feel about is uh, the fact. Now, I uh, you'll have to clarify this for me. Is it definitely coming to TV? Is this a, a spec pilot or what? But we're looking at uh, the League of Extraordinary, uh, Extraordinary Gentlemen coming to television. Like, I, I guess a pilot's being shot right now. According to Angela Watercutter at Wired, uh, Fox has ordered a put pilot. And what that means is that... It has to be shot, it has to be paid for, and it has to air. They don't have to pick it up for a full series order, but you will see at least one episode of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen on television. Now, I did not read the comic book, but I know that they tried to make the movie a giant action spectacular. Um, is, is, what do you think has to change in order to make this work or be even watchable as a television show? I don't know how they can do it as a television show. I really don't. I mean, the producer is apparently uh, worked on Heroes in Smallville. His name's Michael Green. So Smallville was an attempt to take a larger universe and squeeze it onto television. Maybe that, maybe that experience will help him. Yeah. Well, and, and from what I understand, Smallville pretty much worked. And so if they could do the same thing on this. Most of the time it worked. Yeah. Uh, and finally, The Verge has an interesting little article from the Pacific Standard about a company called Asylum, and their business is to create movies dedicated to filling in keyword searches so that when you search for Battleship, it looks like Netflix has tons of Battleship movies. They're not supposed to be very good. They're not even high budget. It's just supposed to beef up the offering. All right, but and understand uh, the Asylum. These are the guys who brought you Sharknado and and Mega Shark versus Turbo Octopus or whatever. I believe they did Atlantic are. Rim as well. Yeah, and what? Well, and, and wait, is that is that a real thing? Tell me yeah, that's a is. real thing. It is a real thing. I think it's an Asylum uh, studio project. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you what, this is the last story. So I'm going to use my extension. You just leave that running for a full minute. I read this whole article and uh, loved it. I loved what these guys are doing because weirdly. They, 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 they set up these rules like they're like, we cannot acknowledge that this is a low budget trash thing. We are not being postmodern. The only way this plays is, is somebody has to feel smug and superior to us, which means we need to play it straight the entire way through. Also, uh, you know, and at this point, Netflix is saying, uh, hey, we need some movies that will fill in this area here that should look kind of like this, have a poster that does that. Um, I, 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 there's an honesty to this Ed Wood like uh, act that these guys are doing. I mean, I, I, did you did you read the whole article? Have you seen any of their movies? It's the new direct to DVD. I, I've seen plenty of the sci fi movies. I saw Snakes on a Train, uh, which I believe <laughs> was a silent picture back in the day. Graham Greene is actually in Atlantic Rim, by the way. So they actually get, you know, 
name-ish actors. I mean, they really there. do, man. They make it for twenty dollars at a taco, and uh, and 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 if they um uh, like sometimes they get slack for for looking too much like the originals, and then they're able to turn it back and be like, you made a you made a two hundred million dollar blockbuster based oh. on Battleship. Screw you. Extent. Extension is up. All, All right. right. Uh, let's move on to the summer movie draft. That felt good, Tom. That felt good. That whole I like, segment. Yeah. I think, I think, it's, I, I think it's got legs. I, I think we'll work the kinks out. We'll get a good name, get a good opening from it from maybe from somebody, and, and I'm, I'm, we're keeping it. Needs a Love beefier yeah. bell at the end. Is it done? Yeah. We need you, a, need a, a, actually, you need that yeah, a buzzer or a gong or something. Yeah. You can rock the, the inception button. Hang oh, on. there we go. Inception. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know what uh, else has legs is uh, this guy in the freaking movie draft back to number one. Uh, this was a, a big weekend. I don't know how I did it, uh, Tom, but like we have had three colossal movie blockbuster bombs happen. Uh, After Earth was one of them. Uh, the Lone Ranger exploded and, and didn't do near expectations. White House Down did not perform anywhere near expectations. Uh, like those three movies pretty much eliminated uh, you and uh, Cargill and Scott just like that. Well, I don't see how Justin can catch you because the forty-two million from Grown Ups two—that's not—that's not the full weekend, is it? Uh, yeah, I believe that's that's the opening weekend, and Grown Ups two barely edged out Pacific Rim. Uh, uh, Pacific Rim is at seven, thirty-seven million for the weekend. Grown Ups two is forty-one. I for couldn't the weekend. believe that that was the entire that that was the entire weekend. If that's the entire weekend, that's not good news for you because Smurfs two is probably going to make a lot of money. I, I still think you're safe. But I think Justin oh. can make a run at you now. Well, okay. So here's where we're at right now is I'm at 765. So I have, I have a lead of 150 million over Justin. Uh, still to make money is whatever is left in Despicable Me and Grown Ups 2. Keep in mind, Despicable, Despicable Me was me, number actually, one. Yeah. De Despicable Me was number one for the second week in a row. Gr Grown Ups 2, you know, on top of that. And then, and then whatever I get from the world's end as well. I mean, Smurf's fever is not going to catch. And it's certainly not going to catch to the tune of $200 million. Which no, is what it it's going to take for Justin to catch It'll do but it back. won't do 200. And actually, the world's end will, is your safety zone. Because it, it doesn't tell even you matter. That's, that's just a little padding to make sure he can't catch you. Yeah, that's my little end zone run at the end. Hey, uh, one thing I want people to start thinking about is, uh, do you realize people are already talking now about what a big summer blockbuster season 2015 is going to be? Like, there's some, there's some well, yeah, uh, image Wars on, on Reddit. Then, yeah. Right. Like that's going to be the year that this game, we, you know, is going to be huge when everybody's going to want to armchair quarterback and decide how to play. So like uh, we're working now to build a setup, a website that will let you guys play with your friends at home and you can play, you know, one of two different rule varieties that we'll have available on there. But uh, man, is it always a lot of fun? I know it's, it, it is. Uh, and I actually think I have a chance at second place because I still have really? the Wolverine and planes and those are getting those are getting a lot of attention. They're getting a lot, of, a lot of looks. I, I saw the Wolverine and Planes trailer before Pacific Rim this weekend. And planes, people, react, people reacting positively. It's yeah, being think planes pitched as is, the successor to Cars. Yes. Well, and they, they even say it's like from the world of Cars. Like, I right. think it's weird because it's a, it's a Disney, not Pixar uh, production, but it's using or it's implying that it's in a Pixar world, uh, which is interesting. Uh, that, could be, that could be huge for you, man. Uh, All right, this I think, week, uh, Turbo, that's Sarah's movie. And uh, later on, a couple of days later, Scott Johnson has read two. So if you want to yeah. see movies in the draft, those are coming out. Shall we then talk about what we're watching? What we're watching. You've been watching one thing, haven't you? I sure have. It's, I've been watching a lot, a lot of uh, Orange is the New Black uh, it's, it's good. It's good. Like I, I wrap my mind around the world. It's very, uh, sticky. Like you go back, you go back to it and it does a believable job of creating, of, of telling multiple stories with lots of flashbacks and flash forwards. You find out where people ended up in their dark place when they went to prison, you know, what, you know, who people were before they became these, these, these hardened, we'll say I'm using air quotes, hardened criminals. Uh, and, it's uh, I, I like it a lot. I'm just going to keep on plowing through it and I'll give you kind of my full digestion on it. But uh, they have a winner. The only thing that's definitely a miss is they uh, 
the the one truly bad guard, and it's probably not a surprise that the correctional officers, you know, are not moral upstarts uh, or stand up people. Uh, and but the one who's really bad, unfortunately, they make him just a little bit of a cartoon to where I just never quite believe it. And it's it's distracting because it's like I want to laugh at him too much. So when he does like really nasty things, it's I'm just like, you know, it's it's like looking at a puppy pooping on the rug. Like like I'm just disappointed in him, you know, like yeah. Even though you even just though have to, you say no and you take him outside and rub his nose say, in it. And, no, you don't rub yeah. your nose in it. It's a horrible thing. Don't. Yeah. Don't oh, rub and I'll the tell you what. Uh, nose in his flat character. Captain Janeway was is awesome in it. Oh, uh, yeah? Kate Mulgrew is is she amazing. Is she was awesome yeah. in Warehouse 13 as well. Uh, I, I, we went and saw Pacific Rim uh, yesterday, and I have to say, I liked it. It's a big, dumb lug of a movie. It's, you know, you just want to grab its cheek and go, you, you, you're a big, dumb action movie. I, how can I be mad at you? How can I not love you? You have giant robots, you have huge monsters, and you have Stringer Bell leading the charge. I mean... What's what's not to love about this movie? If you don't want a big action movie where robots beat up on monsters, you're not going to like this. Don't go. But so, if that appeals to you, it they are self-consciously being silly action movie. And yet there's some actually more complex subplots in there that had me guessing, even though a lot of it is totally predictable action movie stuff. Well, that was my question, because what all I wanted from Pacific Rim, and I haven't seen it yet, uh, all I wanted it was to be that uh, Starship Troopers experience where it's like I went to Starship Troopers expecting I want to see people blow up bugs and I was not prepared and it, you know and it delivered that of course but I was not prepared when I saw that movie for the for the nuance and the implications of fascism and and the there were so many other elements that were secretly smart in what continued to try to look really dumb on the surface uh was there any of that in Pacific Rim was there anything that took you there? like that was really smart what they were doing with that thing a couple of things like that. Now, honestly, not that many. Uh, it certainly doesn't have that Heinlein backbone that Starship Troopers did. But uh, yeah, it, yeah. They're, 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 they did a couple of things where they're like, they're very obviously winking at you going, yes, we know this is exactly what you expected. And here you go. We do it really well. But then there's some other things with a couple of the characters motivations that you're like, OK, I wonder what's behind that. Maybe not fully explained. Not again. It's a big, dumb lug of a movie. I loved it. You just want to be like, <laughs> right on. You big guy. You're great. Uh, let's move on to feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. Where do we yeah. start? You, I'll tell you what, Tom, you were not here last week when we saw the first round of results from the chicken challenge. Uh, yeah. A lot of people ended up cutting the cord. A lot of people reported in their savings. Still getting a lot of stories. Please continue to send those in because they're exciting to hear how they go for everyone. Uh, but from Cyril, he says, it's funny, I've been talking about at least cutting back on cable for years. Never had actually done it. Showed my wife episode 130. And we said, okay, let's give this a try. We called Cox Cable and they pretty much called our bluff and we're happy to cut our cable completely out from our bundle. So we went from paying $183 to $74, keeping just internet and basic phone service. That's amazing, man. A budget of $110 to spend on whatever content you want is pretty good. Uh, so, uh, I said, wow, I had no idea. We have 49 channels free to watch. Some are Hispanic and religious in nature, but still that's a lot more than the three or four over the air analog channel channels we had as kids i already have roku boxes and apple tv for streaming services so i'm good there i have a home-built media pc with three digital tuners oh he knows uh, what he's the, doing yeah i know he clearly does he says the only problem i see will be in the fall with football and hockey season starts i guess we'll see yeah there's nothing yeah. wrong with saving a thousand dollars between now and when that's a problem it's only if you want to follow your local teams that, that it'll be a problem because they might get blacked out. But for, for football, you'll get some stuff over the air. So as long as you can get the channels over the air. Jason, I don't know how he did this. With aggressive negotiation with Comcast, cut his bill to $20 a month for high-speed cable service and HBO. Well, cut it by $20 a month. So, so oh, we don't know what he's actually paying, but he saved himself. Some yeah, oh, that would be that remarkable. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we got one more quick story here. Matt Woodstock says, uh, and I thought this was a really good question. I don't have an answer for it, but maybe you do, or maybe someone in the audience does. He says, uh, as a digital consumer of many years, the one attribute that's needed is patience. My family doesn't need to watch the latest thing right now. We're fine waiting for it to show up in the later distribution channels. Uh, he says, with the number of options for digital consumers increasing at a good clip, 
he'd like to know when a film is going to reach a certain distribution channel. Uh, now, granted, you know, if the deals have already been suck, struck, I said suck. Yeah. Uh, are there any resources to track these rights? For instance, if a movie is slated to come to Netflix after a 28-day window or a show is coming to a, you know, a month before the new season starts, uh, I'd like to know that before I go out and buy the media. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, he's looking for can I stream it of how long you'll have to wait to get everything. And so he can make the educated decision of is it worth spending $20 to get the DVD today or do I want to wait 60 days and watch it for free on Netflix? That kind of thing. I believe that Can I Stream It uh, actually does... I'm going to try to find something that's not for sure there. I believe they do notifications. So... Uh, Oh, it's not in the, I looked for something that wasn't in the database. But if you find something that's not out there, uh, what's something that, oh, Pacific Rim. That's not going to be go. out there. Okay. You can, I believe down here, notify when available on these services. You can set up a reminder and say, oh, okay. let me know when it comes to Apple TV and Amazon. Or you can pick whichever services you want and then they'll, they'll send you a reminder when it shows up there. Yeah, that's a little bit different than what he's looking for. What he's looking for is to to see an either or. Like either you can pay twenty dollars for the DVD now, or you can wait six weeks when it will be on this service for only five dollars or, or whatever. That that might be possible for some of those things that are set up for a twenty eight day waiting period on something like Hulu, but right. most of them there's not a standard like that. Like they yeah. they just they just show up when they show up, and there's no there's no notification period. Uh, in most of those cases. So I don't think there can be a service exactly like that. I think that's the best he can do. But yeah. thanks. Appreciate that. And thank you guys for watching. Twit.tv slash FR. If you want to find all of our episodes, we stream live on Mondays at 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can email us, framerate at twit.tv. Let us know what you think of Quick Cuts. We'll talk to you next time. Quick Hits. Quick Hits. Quick cuts. Smash Cuts. What about Smash yeah. Cuts? Super cuts. Super fly. Yeah.